Okay, again, this the last Sunday of this year, 2016. Let's worship the Lord together in the spirit and truth. Let's turn on the light for the message of today. And today I want to finish this study. Turn on. Let's finish this uh, study of the book of Matthew on the Sermon of the Mount. And this is the last uh, part of this chapter 7 uh, of the Sermon of the Mount. And I entitled, especially for this message, at the end of this year, I know it's Christmas Day, but it's important to know what God wants to tell us today, to build or to recognize that we are built on the rock. Because we are built on the rock, we are here. It was Jesus who said to his disciples that on this very word, he will build his church and it won't be shaken. But uh, according to the scripture that we just read today, how we can live or how we can end this year, 2016, and how can we start the next year, 2017? Uh, uh, and I'm sure this message is for me and it's for you as well as the Holy Spirit wants to speak to all of us that we are getting together in Jesus' name here in CA. Amen? So... Um, probably you remember what I shared with you uh, in the past here in CEN. There were a story or a movie actually from a story uh, in America called The Last Brick Maker of, um, in America. And it was a story it was a, uh, that became a movie in Hollywood and also war, uh, the, the Academy Award and also uh, give inspiration for many Christians and also for me and many messages that I have for our audience. This story of the last brick maker in America is about a man who used to make bricks for construction uh, or for to build buildings in a town. And as time passed and modern uh, machineries and, and industries came to the town, uh, there were a construction company who wants to uh, make a contract with uh, the builders of, or the mayor of the, 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 the state to build new buildings or to remodel the buildings with their uh, machineries, with their personnel, and also in a short time compared to the uh, traditional way that they were building the the, the bills that they have in, in those, in those uh, cities. So they found out that they were a person who have a contract already to build one of these buildings of the city. But he was postponed or he was delaying or he was just uh, no showing on time what he was building. And the people start to ask questions about when he gonna finish to prepare the bricks for this building, or when he he going to to show us what he's working on, and people start to get uh, desperate, and and then they discuss to each other and say, probably he is not strong enough, he's not young enough to continue his job, and it's time probably to cancel his contract because maybe he won't do it on time, and replace this uh, contract with a, a company who can make this bridge just in a couple of days. But since it was this uh, out of the law to break the contract that they made with this uh, brick maker, they just giving a warning and they say, if you don't deliver the bricks on the date, then you, we're gonna sue you and you're gonna have a big damage. They tried to uh, intimidate him in some way to stop this uh, nonsense work because now machines can do everything. Now machines can, can do things that people do it in, 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 short, in long time with the power of a, a modernness in a, in a very uh, short time. And this reply of this man said that I will continue making these bricks and I will deliver in long time. Now the question was, how are you gonna make all this? On time. How are you gonna bring all uh, this petition in the right place in the right time? 
because you don't have more help, you don't have more ma uh, machinery, so how are you going to make it? And the answer was, I'm just going to make one brick at a time. One brick at a time. That was his answer. He said, I won't try to make something more than I can and as different uh, or different than I did before. I will continue doing the bricks as I have done so far and in the same time as I have done so far. And don't worry about the, the, the date of delivering the bricks. You will have it on time. Of course, this, this story in the movie shows that there were tra dramatically uh, moments that the rain came on, on these uh, bricks and, and the, the first lot was destroyed. And he was uh, tried to mentor a boy who was a troublemaker in school, was an elementary student, and this, this boy uh, came to help him and also to, to be discipled by him, who also teaching him uh, Christian values, Christian principles. And they finished the, the, the petition on time, and they uh, continue uh, making bricks in the traditional way that they have done so far. Uh, of course, these days, no one is doing like that, and there's no brick makers uh, analogically in, 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 in America because of modern machineries and because people, they want things sooner uh, than before. But what I want to say today, that our ministry, your life, your business, your family, or whatever, you try to build on your life so far, or you plan to build the next year, have to be one step at a time. One step at a time. We don't need to hurry to do things that we cannot do, and we don't try to pretend to do things that we cannot do, and make promises that we cannot keep, trying to impress people to be satisfied, but when the day come, when the day to evaluate, when the day to see the fruits come, we can know, give our word. As I said the last week, many of us just focus on the fruit, rather than to focus on the process, rather than to focus on the, 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 the root that we have for bearing these fruits. Today, I have a similar message for you. And today, the scripture in the Sermon on the Mount, it summarized once again what Jesus was taught the whole uh, sermon. And at the end of the chapter 7, Jesus again gave us two things to compare. And we have here two build buildings, or two builders, and two houses to compare and to evaluate. This year, 2016, that is ending, and the new year, 2017, that is coming. We have the contracts here. And we see <clears throat> a contract of the one who listen and practice the word of God. And we ha have the contract versus the one who listen and not practice the word of God. We are coming every Sunday to listen a sermon. I'm sure that you come hungry and thirsty to listen and to have an encounter with God. And that's the reason you are faithfully come to see you and every Sunday, and I appreciate and give thanks to God for that, and I pray for that. But it's not just to come and listen to a beautiful sermon, an inspired sermon, but it's to go and put in practice every day in our lives. That is my prayer. That is my, my, my time of preparation for every message for you, that in some way, this message is for you. And, and, and you need it. And you have to put it in practice to be blessed by God. To really experience the plans that God has for you. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you and to give you a future. But without practicing and only just listening what God said, we cannot see that we are in God's plan. And we cannot see that we are bearing the fruits of our relationship with God and the fruit of being here every Sunday, listening God's word, God's message for our life. So we ha see here again two things to compare. The ones who just listen and no practice or no obey, and the one who listens and obey. 
who have listened with faith and obey trust in the Lord. Two builders to compare. The one who built on the rock and the one who built on the sand. And as we see, these two probably builders, they build the same kind of build. They build beautiful houses. But what we don't see is the foundation. Most of the time we see in these modern Korean cities that we have now, beautiful apartments. We see beautiful buildings that, once again, they look beautiful from the way that we see from outside. But we, not, we need to go to the basement or the, 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 the platform that contain the foundation of this building to see how strong, how good are these buildings building today in Korea. A few months we hear the news is that in Korea for the first time uh, the air start to shake. And people are start to worry about that, yes, maybe it's sooner or later here in Korea or here in Seoul, we can have a big air core. And people are worrying, what's happening, hypothetically, if there's an air quarry in Seoul? The statistics said that it will be a calamity. Because all the houses, the buildings that are now in Seoul, in the capital city, have no strong foundation to resist an air quarry with the magnitude that they have in countries like Japan, India, or any other countries that these days they are suffering because frequently it's air course. Since to the architects to, that these days are on the market, they are building now new buildings with the infrastructure to resist any kind of air course. But doesn't mean that it's a guarantee that we're gonna be safe if that really happened. But at least give us a hope that they consider that if an earthquake happened, they could resist in some way. Now, I live in an apartment that you have 37 floors. And my apartment is in the last floor of the building. So when those days there were news about it, the south of Korea having the earthquakes, I literally that very day feel in my apartment shaking. And it was shaking so no, uh, obviously that I could see everything just moving and dancing on my apartment. My wife didn't notice, but since I'm from Peru, and we have frequently aircraft in Peru, so I feel it in, in, in a moment. And I saw the whole apartment just dancing with me. And I saw it to my kids and said, wow, the, the, it was new for them. It was an unexpected experience. And I said, well, that's nothing. You will see that how buildings are shaking. And probably it was just a resonance of that uh, air core, or it was just a strong wind. But it really makes the building dance. And maybe it was not an air core. But I was thinking, if this really happened in, 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 in Seoul or in Incheon, the area where they're living, how this building can resist a uh, catastrophe like we see normally in other places. The foundation normally is hiding from the side, as the root also is hiding from a tree. And as the scripture said, as we see the last week, by the fruits you will know them. So we try to build in our life some kind of spirituality. We try to live in our, live, build in our family a home. We try to build in our business security and prosper uh, place to, to, to serve God and honor God. But sometimes we see our foundations are shaking it. We, it's, it's time to evaluate right now at the end of the year what kind of foundations we have. What is the, the foundations of your life? your business, your spirituality, your family, that guarantee that the next year you will not have a better year. You will not have a prosperous year compared to this year, 2016. A true pity 
is also found on those who really practice it, not on those who just know about piety. In other words, you know about faith, and you're listening about faith, and you listen to the Word of God every, every Sunday and every day as you read the Bible, but is your spiritual life, is the life of faith in the eyes of God as obedient as the Bible and God says and speaks to you every day? Or it's just, okay, God, I know it. I, am, I got it. Now, I see you the next day or the next devotional time with more of your teaching. We are not here to just learn from God His will and from le le learn from God how to approach more to Him if we are not really becoming like Him, if we are not really deepening our relationship with Him. So once again, we, we, we try to, to build a, a, a relationship with God, but this relationship with God needs a strong foundation. As the, as the Lord Jesus said in this parable, it must build on the rock. Now, what is the rock? Jesus himself teaches in the Bible that he is the rock. He is the cornerstone. Moses says he is the rock in the desert who give, he'll give us water. It was the rock that protected Elijah in, in, the, in the desert. It was the rock that, that the, the people of Israel built altars to offer God prayers and holocaust. What is our spiritual life without Jesus? I mean, these days, religious in, in this world, many people say, well, yes, we are Christians. But it's just a name. Without having a relationship with Christ. We have intimacy with God. I come from a country with it's called it a Christian country or a Catholic country. And many people speak about God in natural ways. But starting from my family, I see many of my religious members of my family, they are very devoted to their religion, but they don't have a relationship with God. They're literally worship the Bible. I, I, I mean, in my house, my mother have a, a Bible as big as this altar here. But it's full of dust. It's just a decoration of the house to show, yeah, we are religious people. But she never read it. And I say, why do you have a, a Bible just that big? Is you never going to read? Why do you try to show? Or to whom you try to impress with your magnificent size of Bible? And as much as people became elder or older, they tried to show more re religious uh, displays than, than they, they were young. And, and, and I'm so sad that many Catholic countries in South America, they just show a religious spirit, but not a relationship with God. You should ask them what? What God spoke to you this morning, or, or, or how you deep your relationship with God this morning, they say, well, I didn't have time to read the Bible. I didn't have time to pray. I'm so busy with this or that. And, and, and God knows, and, and, and God loves everybody. We are all brothers in Christ. They, they just come with these fancy words. That sounds good to listeners. But God cannot be impressed with our words. Cannot be impressed with just saying, Lord, Lord, in your name, we made this. In your name, we, we, we go to church every Sunday. Jesus said, you never knew me. You never have a relationship with me. You just keep me out of your, of, of your life. Like today, Christmas Day, many people, many Christians are kicking out Jesus of their Christmas celebration. It's just about gifts. It's about parties. It's about just meeting friends. In, in America, statistics say that people, they, Christians, I was listening to the news last week, Christians, they say, oh, we agree to call this, 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 this days Christmas holidays instead to call these days Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays instead to say Merry Christmas. And the majority of percentage of Christians, they agree with that. Why Christians, they don't want to say Merry Christmas anymore? And it's happening. 
these days. And the reason is because we are trying to build Christianity without Christ. We try to show Christianity without knowing God's word, without talking to God in prayer, and spending God to see how he bared in us fruits according to our obedience. And we just try to show uh, some kind of religious culture, style of life. I am these days working in a Christian school again. And once again, I feel very disappointed to see how many Christian students, they, run, they want to run away from Christianity. I'm talking about students. And the reason of them is because they say, teacher, they call me teacher because they don't know I'm a pastor. They say, teacher, I don't like this Christian school because everything that I learned from Christian school is just hypocrisy. Teachers are hypocrites. Pastors are hypocrites. And I say, okay, well, let's discuss about well, how do you think they are hypocrites? Or, or when do you realize that they are hypocrites? And of course, they don't need to answer me because it's obvious what I see. What I see in many of these Christian institutions and I say this morning to my kids, and I, say, I don't know why, this is probably only here in this country or it's an Asia culture that when we are praying, when we are praying, most of the leaders, pastors, or teachers, they move around the auditorium. They walk they talk, they try to prepare for the next step of the performance instead of prayer together. And I still see this happen in this school that I'm working now. And, I, and when I pray, because I lead the worship time in the morning, I see teachers start to stand up, working. The leaders, student leaders, they stand up and work and prepare for the next step. And I say, when Korean people or when Korean churches teach to Christians in Korea that at the moment of prayer is the moment that you stand up, talk to each other, go around, and just prepare for the next step of the performance instead of prayer. And kids know that. And students see that. And they just learn from imitation. And now we have a new generation that in the moment of prayer, they don't pray. They just look around seeing what other people are doing. And very few numbers of students, they just close their eyes and pray. Actually, there's, I don't see in the Bible, there's a passage of the Bible that says when we pray, we should close their eyes. Jews, they don't close their eyes when they pray. They don't try to impress anyone. They just go and pray, especially they pray on the walls. They, they, they pray standing out, as Jesus said, so everybody can see it. But Jesus called them hypocrites, too, because they don't pray sincerely. They just try to show how they pray. But I, I'm sorry if I offend you, especially those who are in Korean. But I, I can't stand see, and in this church, too, I'm sorry to say that. In our church, too, when someone is leading in prayer, many leaders, pastors, and those who are in charge of something, they don't pray. They just walk around. Jesus said, when, when two or three are getting together in my name, I will be in the midst of them. And whatever you ask in my name, and you agree here and there, what you tie here and there will be tied in heaven. And what did you, you lose here and there will be lost in heaven. Because that's the power of prayer. But we try to build a house without praying sincerely, without knowing God's word. And what we have, we try to build a kingdom of God, but this kingdom is just built on the sand. We are building a kingdom on the sand. 
instead to build a kingdom upon the rock of Jesus. We are closing this year, 2016. And I personally, I can confess, as I said the last week, that yes, I cannot show to God good fruits from my ministry this year or any kind of fruit. I just come with empty hands to God and say, God, well, I did my best. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, God. I failed you. Sorry, God. I, 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 I was confident in myself, but I, I didn't put my confidence in you. And I have to confess, God, I tried to do it my own way without listening to you, without asking you for wisdom. And I felt that, yes, I tried to build a church on the sand. I tried to build a ministry on the sand. But you know, if you try to build a castle, sand castle, on the beach, or the shore of the beach, you know that sooner or later, the waters will come and wash away your castle, or whatever you build with the sand. I feel like that today, that there were a wave of God's evaluation in my life and say, well, you have nothing. You have nothing. And yes, I feel that some way I'm not in a collapse. I'm honest to you. I, I told you before, I'm, I'm not trying to pretend I'm a holy pastor. I'm not trying to, to, to to tell you that everything's fine. We are successful. I am a successful leader. I am a wise person here. I'm here to guide you. Follow me, my, my dear loving ships. And, and, and many people who hear this kind of leader, they don't want to follow. It's, it's a, a, fa a failure. I don't want to be follow this, this failure leader. But from where I come from, that's called it humility <laughs> or humbleness. I try to be humble, to be honest with you and instead to pretend to be someone that I'm not. Remember what happened in the September 11 in America at the Keogh. These build their buildings that were representing the economic power and the proud of America was destroyed in just a few minutes. And they these twin towers collapse on this day, September 11. And from that day, history has changed. The world has been changed. You can go to Ground Zero again, and you see there's a memorial there. But they build again another building. They start again. This message is for those who feel like me, that Probably this year, 2016, you feel that everything has been collapsed. Your finances, your relationship with people, your relationship with your family, your health has collapsed. Your, your, your dreams have collapsed. And you have nothing to continue. Or probably you feel exhausted now that you don't have more energy for one more day to live or for one more year to serve the Lord and to have a relationship with Him. Collapse happened. And I don't want to preach this sermon like many pastors that just focus on those who build on the rock. But I'm focusing this sermon and this message for those who have fell building on the sand. And if you feel like me, that you have been fell building your house, your business, your relationship with God on the sand, this sermon is for you. The scripture said that the rain descended and if you analyze this, the rain descended from where? The rain descended from above. The scripture said that there were flow that came, and the flood came from below always. And there were winds to blow, and these winds came from across. So do you see, when collapses come, come first from above. Then from beneath, and from everywhere. If you fell your relationship with God, everything will fail. If everything that you build without God, whatever you try to lift to God, it will come down from heaven again on your head. And we will crush you. 
Jesus said, I am the cornerstone. Those who believe on me will be saved, but woe to them who this cornerstone will be on them. It's not that they're going to collapse. They're going to be crushed by the cornerstone. So we are here to build on this rock, and this rock is Jesus. And not to try to fantasy in our life or try to pretend to be what we are not. This house was beating in all directions. Because after you fell in your relationship with God or in your faith to God, everything, and you will feel like from everywhere you have been attacked. Financially, relationship with people, your co-workers, your brothers and sisters, your mother and father, everywhere, from, from behind, from every part of your song, you will feel that, yes, you have no place to stand. And hell is promise. But what is the real defeat? It's not that you are collapsed. It's not that you fail that it is defined you're defeating. The real defeat is not to fall, but to deny to rise again. Deny to rise again. Sorry, I mistyped that. The great or the real defeat is not to fall, to collapse, but to deny yourself to rise up again, to stand up again. I say, I'm here humbly to confess my sins here in front of you, my church, because I love you, because I don't want to be a hypocrite. But I'm here to also to stand out again and say, I will do it again. I will try my best again. I will try my best in front of God again, the new, the new year again. I say to this one person who was with us, and as soon as this person listened, they said, oh, I don't want to follow you if you think that way. Okay. The doors are always open for those who want to come and are always open for those who want to go. I just try to be honest with you, frank with you, and not make promise that I cannot keep. But if we trust in God, and if we live for God together, sincerely, genuine faith, God promises his blessing to us. I believe that. I've been 20 years here in Korea, and I see God's faithfulness in my life. I believe God can do it again. And he will lift me up again. He will raise me up again. And every morning he do the same thing. Every night when I go to bed, to bed, I say, Lord, I'm just collapsed in front of my bed. I cannot live one more day. I, am, I have a stress. I have a, a headache. Please, don't let me wake up next morning. But the next morning I wake up again. and say, God, I'm still here. I'm still here in planet there. What do you want from me? And he said, come on, come on, get up, get up. 20 years ago, he, he blessed me, he encouraged me, he forgave me. Now he said, okay, you are not a baby anymore. This is part of you grow. Come on, get up, get up. You are a leader. So act like a leader. Be mature. In other words, we don't need just to, oh, I'm a failure and cry and, 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 and just think about the past, what we had done. Joshua, who was the next leader of Israel, after Moses passed away, he was crying and, and in front of God, and God said, stop crying, stop, stop mourning for Moses. Moses is dead. Now get up and lead my people of Israel to the promised land that I will show you. We just need to cross the river. We just need to cross this year 2016 to the year, year 2017 with a different attitude because God promised the same word that he promised to Joshua to everyone I will be with you and this Christmas time is all about that Emmanuel God with us we don't have fruit okay but we still have the root and the root is Jesus we are still on the, standing on the rock and we're going to stand on the rock and the rock is Jesus now we have to rebuild again the root will support you and the rug is with us. But we have to now to 
Take the principles I want to show to you, these five principles, how to rebuild again. And if you want to start a new year next week, next Sunday will be January 1st, then let's have to keep in mind this. First, build yourself first, your life, your spirituality. Don't try to rebuild or build on other people's first. Don't say, God, this message is for this person. This message is for my, my wife, for my husband. No, 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 no. Don't have that attitude. Start with yourself. Jesus said, how can you say to the, your neighbor, let me take out this stick on your, your eye when you have a really strong wood in front of you? That's hypocrisy. Start with yourself. Start judging yourself before you judge others. Second, focus in evidence rather than focus in the fruit. God wants to see your evident heart. I think that God will say, well, my son Christian, he doesn't have many fruits, but he never disobey me. I say, God, I cannot do it, but I'm going to do it again. I cannot do it, but I'm going to do it because you asked me to do it. So I'm not an expert. I'm not good in math. I'm not a, a good administrator. But God put me always in, in many challenges that I, I don't know how to do it. I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to be a pastor. <laughs> but God said, okay, I want you to be a pastor. Amen. I want you to be a leader. Amen. I said, Lord, not my will, but your wills. Like Mary said in Christmas Day, be unto me according to your word. I'm just a servant of the Lord. Number three, recognize your position and your location. As a foreigner, I, I sense God for having a GPS these days. We are in 2016, so you just need a GPS in your car. You just need, and now since the iPhone, we have GPS at the hand. So whenever I want to go, I just have to put the location there I want to go, and then I just follow the directions. But before that, I have to ask questions to people for direction. And if there were no people who give me directions, what just did is just looking for a map. And sense to God that these days in amusement parks, in museums, in every department store, any building that you go, you will find this corner where there is a map. And this map says, you are here. And since to that phrase I say, you are here to let me know where I am in the building, where I am in the complex, where I am in this location, to give me direction for where I want to go. So in this year that is finished and this year that is coming, where are you? What is your position now? What is your location now? What, 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 what status do you have now? Are you aware of who you are, what you are, and what God is doing in you. If somebody goes to Alcoholicos Anonymous, the first thing that they want to ask to the new member is to recognize who they are. And if the person doesn't recognize that he's a alcoholic person, they cannot start to treat them, to help them to to, to recover to a normal life. They have to admit, yes, my name is Christian and I'm alcoholic. That's why they introduce themselves. If they don't say that very simple introduction, they cannot start their therapy or recuperation. You can ask to Jonas, who, who was uh, helping many AA people. It's true. We have to recognize where we are in this year, 
in God's plan in our life, in our life that we have building so far, to continue building or to rebuild or to start again. God said today in his word, you are here. You are here. Number four, commit to rebuild. It's not just to say, okay, I'm a failure. I'm done. God doesn't love me. Because that's what many people, many baby Christians say, God doesn't love me. Or God doesn't love me anymore. No, God is faithful always. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still loves you. And even though you fail, He's still with you. You just need to have a commitment to stand up again, to get up again, and what we got again. Then God will guide you in the new year. Number five, take the initiative to repair. Don't blame other people and say, oh, it's because my parents, they make me like this. I just need to do that. <laughs> blame my parents for what I am. Or, oh, it, it was this, this, this co-worker, it was this friend of mine that brought me in this situation. It wasn't my fault. I did, did nothing. In, in, in Christian counselor, counseling, many counselors, they, they have counseling with couples, husband and wife. And most of the counselors, they share this in seminars. They say, when you brought a, 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 a couple for counseling, they say to this couple, to the wives especially, they, they, start, they have separate interviews, and they say to the wife, okay, in a scale of one to 10, how is your relationship with your husband? And most of the time, the women say, can I say zero? The scale is one to 10, but she asks, can I say zero? Now they have the same interview with the husband and they say, in a scale of one to 10, how's your relationship with your wife? And the husband always say, can I say 12? Can I say 12? Two people who are building a house together or a home together, who have a relationship together, they have different perspectives and different evaluation of themselves. They don't know where they are. They don't know where they are. For the woman, her home is a collapse. Not even level one, it's just level zero, ground zero. <laughs> but for the husband, everything's fine. It's just all happy day. And that's why probably he's back every night when he's back home. This problem is frequently in our society here in Korea too. Many we are living in a dream without knowing who is living together with us. We have to take the initiative to repair, focus against what are our mistakes first before we judge other. How obedient we are, not just listening. How recognize we our position. One there were a, 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 a new member of a church, uh, a young member of the church, and he was for a year in a church. And after a year, he came to the senior pastor and said, Pastor, why don't you make something for the next year to have a revival here in this church? Because I see in this church, many people are hypocrites. Many people, they are, they are uh, talking against each other. Many people, they are just not worshiping God as uh, uh, they should worship. They just... They need a revival. So how can we start a revival in this church, he asked to the senior pastor. Then the senior pastor, he brought a chalk and came to this younger man and said, can you please stand up? And he draw a circle around this man. And he said, as soon as the revival starting in this circle, it will start in this church. In other words, if the revival doesn't start with you, don't criticize a church for not having a revival. If a relationship with God is not deep in you, don't evaluate the body of Christ for not having a deep relationship with God. Everyone needs to make an initiative, repair, 
the damage in your, in your life, starting with yourself, starting inside you. What needs to be repaired? What needs to be built again? What needs to be remodeling or reinforced or try to make it beautiful? Not just masquerade. Don't be hypocrite. Here in Korea, you can see in Seoul many new buildings, many new stores. But they are all masqueraded outside. They have probably uh, pre-constructed paper or uh, bricks. But if you take all of them, you will find the foundations are all corrupted. They are all almost collapsing. And as I say, according to the news, if that earthquake happened in Seoul, all this building will not fall. And will be a great damage in Korea. We have to pray for God's protection. We are here in this year 2060 to finish listening God's word, but putting in practice. And it started the new year 2017, listening God's word and putting in practice. The Proverbs will say, Truth, wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding is established. But the knowledge, the runes are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. So we're going to build this ministry again, but with wisdom, with the knowledge of the word of God. And if we don't have wisdom, the answer is in the Bible, in James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who give to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. So I start to go back to pray. I will ask you and invite you again to support this means, especially this second service, with a time and a group of prayer. We used to have a few years ago a group of women that every Sunday before I preach because as you know, I have the first service with kids. Then at 11 a.m., I have meeting with teachers. I have been in 30 minutes without concluding this meeting and just come from this meeting to start to preach the second service. But there were, a few years ago, a group of women who they always pray for me before I preach. And those days, we have many members, students, who are serving faithfully. We have a praise team with a full band, guitar, bass, drummers, singers, four singers were singing here. Where are these? They all one by one left the ministry. One on one one moved to another city. And now we started today just with a video to praise the Lord. <laughs> we don't have musicians, we don't have singers anymore. Just me and you. We need to go back to prayer. To start with the, our group of meeting of prayers and go back to discipleship. Go back to the Word of God. Because that's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of knowledge. Without knowing God, without knowing God's Word, without praying, we have no foundation to build this ministry. Without Jesus, this, build, this ministry won't be built. So just to conclude my, my message of today, I just want to introduce you to the next year theme. Stand fear. Stand fear. This year, 2016, we tried to build the kingdom of God here. But in some way, we couldn't present to God the fruits that we promised at the beginning of the year. We evaluate ourselves. We don't fall or keep on the floor crying for not bearing the, the fruits or having the, the, the standard or, 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 or the, the level of success that we try to, to, to reach. But we're going to stand again. And we, as soon as we stand again, we're going to stand firm on God's promise, on God's word. And as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my brothers, stand fear, and let not, nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the word of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 
What we have done this year was not in vain. Even though we don't see the fruits of our work, God is still with us. And God will be always with us. He still loves us. And if we have still life, then still hope. And if there's hope, there's faith to believe that God has a plan for us. Not to harm us, but to prosper us and to give you a future that he already designed for us. Whatever you want to build this year, 2017, your business, your relationship with people, your, your home, your spirituality, build on Jesus, who is the rock. It's just tent on Jesus. He will lift you up. He will lift you up, and you will see the next year God's glory We fall again on this place in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for giving us your message of today. Lord, we many times try to...